Have you ever thought about making your own stencils for your journals? For this two-page spread, I had rolled on the paint on this, and then I stenciled. I was new to rolling on paint with a brayer, so I ended up with splotches, and I thought they kind of looked like leaves, so I decided to make a stencil to, to cover the blotches and make the leaves on there. So that's what I did. I cut it from a piece of plastic like this, which is from a clamshell, like your pastries come in from the bakery or something like that. I did a simple design for this, this leaf spray. But you can make stencils with other designs. You can um, use things like coloring books and, and trace a design off to use. You might be thinking, well, why would I want to cut a stencil? I could just buy one. There are various reasons. Maybe you don't want to go to the store or maybe you want to create something that's original. You can create a design that you want to repeat on various pages. A stencil is an easy way to add design. It's inexpensive for one thing, especially if you use packaging plastic. And just for the fun of it, just to see if you can do it and have some fun with it. So I will show you how and why I made this stencil and I will show you how I made another stencil in the, in the video. So let's get started. Last time, I was showing you how I finished off the last uh, double page signatures in this journal. And this one, I had done the stencils with the roses and rolled on the ink with this brayer, which is really a face massager. That's what I used to put this background ink on there. Um, I'm hoping I'm gonna get another brayer that's a little bigger than this one because I think it would be smoother. This kind of ended up being a little bit splotchy especially right here where I had these green splotches. And I decided that they kind of look like leaves on a stem. So then that's when I decided to cut a stencil for it. What I did is I took tracing paper, and you can hardly see this, I know, but I went over, I put it over where the blotches were and decided where I wanted leaves to go and I drew the leaves on this. And then I used, um, my, this is a stencil cutter that I've had for a long time and used very little, <laughs> but um, I used it to cut this. And what you do when you cut a stencil with that is you have a design that you want. You need a piece of glass to protect your surface because of the heat. If you put it on anything, wood or plastic paper, it will melt it or catch it on fire, which would be worse. So, um, I just put my my design under here, and I put this piece of plastic, which is a piece of plastic out of a, one of those clamshells that pastries and things come in. I got that tip from Kathleen Mauer, which is very help helpful. I tried cutting it with, a, with an X-Acto knife, and I don't know if my knife was too dull, or I just didn't have the patience for it. But anyway, I remembered I had this tool it melts it. And when it does it, it's kind of bumpy on the edge. And I thought, oh, that may make it not do a good job. But it didn't seem to have any effect on my result, which I'll show you again. I used Distress Oxide ink and bundled sage to stencil the leaves on there. And then I took a, a pen, a marker pen, one of these, these pens. It's Marby. Color in Le Plume 2 is the name of it. It has a, has a wide point, like a brush point, and a little fine point. And I used the fine point to draw the stem. And I used the green and the caramel color on that to, to add the dimension to it. My leaves don't have the, the um, kind of serrated edge that a, a rose leaf has, but, you know, close enough, I figure. Anyway, I think I covered most of that in the last video, but I wanted to show you how I cut the stencil. Um, and show you a couple of other things about that. So, I'll put this aside, and this is the packaging. I kept the packaging because it has a little bit of instructions on the back, and it tells you what to put. Um, put your artwork down, put the glass on top of it, and then use the acetate, which is the what you're cutting the stencil out of. Use the tool on to cut the holes in it. And it says that the temperature of the tip is 221 degrees, so you definitely want to be particularly careful about it. I, I wanted to show you the other point. This has this bulb-like point, and then it also came with this one. Those are removable, but once they get hot, you don't want to touch them until they cool down again. 
And this one has a very fine point on it, but I cannot get it to stay on the, the heating element. It wants to slide off. This doesn't tighten down tight enough on it. So I don't know how to fix that. So basically that part is useless to me. I did look this week when I was out shopping. Walmart has um, something that cost about $10. It's called a hot knife. It's basically this kind of X-Acto knife that has, like if this were inserted into that, it's basically that. And I don't know how hot it gets or anything, but anyway, it is. it would slice through this much quicker than just using the knife. So it just depends on how you wanna do it. If you have a good sharp knife, it's definitely possible to cut your stencils with that. These are some other items that you could use to cut stencils from. This, of course, is the packaging off of the um, clamshell thing. And it's, it is a pretty good thickness of acetate. This is a, a lid to a uh, Christmas card box from a few years ago. I kept it because I thought, oh, that's good acetate. <laughs> It's a little bit thinner than the one from the clamshell. So, I think it would make a good stencil. It's pretty sturdy and might be easier to cut with an X-Acto knife than the other one. Um, this is uh, five, five tab dividers for like a notebook. And they are different colors of plastic, but they're also... You can kind of see through them. That's a dark color. There's a yellow one that you probably could see what you're cutting on it better. This is a flower that I drew off while ago. I'm not sure it's gonna, I'm not sure I have all my parts in the right place to make it a good stencil because um, you don't wanna cut everything out where it's just the whole thing falls out. So it has to, you have to have places where it's still attached to this. And, um, show you on these are this is a stencil I bought the other day and you can see how that's connected to the main part that little piece is loose that little piece but it's all connected where it's nothing's gonna fall out completely and your design will be gone so that's what you need to concentrate on it's kind of like patting your head and rubbing your stomach to me because it's a little bit confusing about, okay, what do I, where do I need to cut this? So this is gonna be experimental. And I think I'm gonna do it on the clear. But these would work. It's not as thick as the clamshell, but I believe it's a little bit um, thinner than, than this acetate. It's, it's comparable to that, but it's, it's kind of more flexible than this. I think I'll use this box lid. And first thing I need to do is cut the, Cut the sides off of it so it's flat and make sure it's big enough to go on that it is so I'll just cut this okay okay now I have a piece of acetate that I think will work it's got a ridge on it right there I'm gonna cut that off so it's smoother and if you want to, once you get these finished, you can put tape or something around the edge just to kind of give it a little more support. You could cut corners off where they're not sharp. The only downside putting tape around the edge is you wouldn't wash your stencil and then you'd have tape to deal with. So I don't know about that. Okay. I'm gonna tear this out so I can... These are some other de designs I was um, playing around with. This is from... This design, I kind of copied this flower off of a piece of scrapbooking paper. This is um, Peony on Navy is what that's called from Hobby Lobby. I don't know if they still have that or not. And then these leaves were some that, this was a weekly schedule list. And um, it's those leaves that I thought those were kind of neat looking. If you were going to do this rose, you would want to cut just around where you have this whole shape there. And then go back and cut a stencil that has these other shapes, holes for each one of those pieces to position over it. And st stencil the, the lower color, the light color first, and then position the other stencil and stencil the um, darker color on that. But you can get ideas 
from various things. I mean, I I even saw this uh, candy box. I thought this color was pretty, and, and then I noticed it has this design on it. And if you wanted something geometric and had the patience, you could draw your lines, and um, and then just go part way in between whatever little. These are bows. You could put some other design, a dot or a teardrop or whatever on those instead. Or you could put bows if you wanted to. Lots of inspiration for your stencils. So I'm going to take this out. Okay. And this is just a sketchbook pad that I drew that in. You put your design underneath a piece of glass. I just took a piece of glass out of a picture frame and put painter's tape on the edges so that it wouldn't be as sharp and dangerous. It wouldn't keep it from um, getting broken if you dropped it, but at least it keeps you from cutting your fingers on a sharp edge. And let's see if I'm in a good position for that. Put it there. And then this is, I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna turn it this way. And I am going to tape it down. I'm just gonna use some scotch tape on this, this time. Probably would rather have something that won't stick quite so much, but I didn't keep it in here. I'm just gonna leave enough room around the edge of this to be sure that I don't get ink on the paper when I'm, when I'm working on it, when I'm stenciling it. Okay. All right, now, I need to think about what I wanna keep in place and what needs to go. And I'm thinking I wanna keep this line to be a white line. So I wanna be sure that's there and then I'm gonna cut those pieces out this whole center piece out because I want that to be solid. And then that I would draw in with a pen. Um, over here, it's a little bit iffy. I wonder if I need to think about that a little bit more. No, I think I'll just end it. Hope this is good and hot and um, I'll do this. I'm, it had a place on it that was, um, it had been around so long. I think it had gotten against the point sometime and it, kind of melted the, um, the coating on this, so my husband helped me fix it up. It's not pretty, but it works. <laughs> and I'm going to put that somewhere where it doesn't make noise. Okay, I'm going to start on that side and work my way this way, I believe. So, and it work. It seems like to me it works best if you hold it perpendicular to your surface. Let's see, where do I want to start on this? I want to leave, I want to leave connections between the white space and the outside so that it's not a loose piece. So I need to be sure I do that. So maybe I'll go around the outside edge first and um, see about starting here. And I'm just gonna skip over a little bit there and just follow my line around. And skip a bit there. I don't know how it's going to look when I do it, but I don't want it to be too floppy. If it has some little blank spots in there, that's okay. So, just coming around here. This has nothing to do with cutting a stencil, but my husband and I were on our walk this morning and we found out that there was a an old car show or a classic car show in our neighborhood, just a few blocks up the street, almost on our walk. So we veered over there and, and looked at the cars and that was so fun, such a nice surprise. They had um, a couple of 57 Chevys. A lot of them had been restored. Some of them had just been, um, I don't know what you call it when it's, it's not restored, but it's fixed up <laughs> where it's um, hot rod, maybe. I don't know. I don't know what you call it. I'm not, I'm not very conversant in the terms, but I do love seeing the old cars. And of course, some of them were like, um, there was a pickup like my daddy had, a 1950 pickup. And it was very similar to the one he had when I was growing up, but it was also extremely beautiful, and his was not. <laughs> My husband was kidding me about the patina. Daddy shined his all the time, and I said he didn't He didn't even have paint on it, hardly, so 
No, he wasn't shining it up. But that was such a pleasant surprise, and the weather could not have been nicer this morning. It was about 68, I guess, when we left the house. And so by the time we got up there, it had warmed up. I don't know. It was it was very pleasant. And they couldn't have had a nicer day for it. Let's see, this all needs to come out here. Get to talk and I'll forget what I'm doing. I suppose you could always go back and fix it up with a little bit of tape. I don't know. I need to think about cutting out the pieces, not so much what I'm saving. Except where it's, it needs to be connected to the outside. This piece will come out. Oh, it's one thing that happens. It shoots across there, so you want to be careful when that, when you're doing it to not, try not to let that come towards you when you're, when you're cutting it because it might get burned. And we don't want anybody getting burned. I don't want to get burned. Oops, there it goes again. I think I turned the corner too fast. I want this whole middle piece to be out. So I'll just start over here. No, I'm gonna start right there. Come down this way. I have no idea if this is gonna be nice or not look right. <laughs> and you could make double layers if you wanted to, to um, add the extra color like the, the one I copied. Um, like to put that extra dark pink in there. You could have a, another stencil. Just cut a stencil for that too, if you wanted to. Or you could just do it by blending, blending ink. It really does do better when I hold it up straighter. All right, I'm gonna put this down and I'm gonna unplug it because it's hot. It comes with a, a little rack that you can put it on so you can set it down while you're working. I am going to remove the tape and take it off. Let's see how it looks. Okay. I don't know if you can see it or not. I'm going to put something dark under here so that maybe that will show it up better. Okay, that's better. That's my felt pad I put down when I, when I stamp. Now let's see if we can take out the pieces that I want to come out without tearing up the rest of it. You can use an X-Acto knife or something to, like that right there. That little piece there, I want it to come off, so I'm just gonna take the knife and cut that off. I want that to come out. I think I got confused about what I was doing. I left it where it was, was attached. There we go. There's a lot more to this. So I think what I'll do is turn the camera off and come back when I have all this part done. Okay, I have all the pieces cut out now and um, I have no idea how this is gonna work. But anyway, we're gonna try it out. I'm gonna first try it with some dis um, Distress Oxide Victorian Velvet and see how that does. And a brush. All right, let's see. I think I'll just put it kind of at the bottom of this page. Okay, I'm just gonna put it there. Let's see how this goes. I don't know if that ink is gonna go in those little tiny lines there, if that will show up or not. 
<laughs> but we'll find out. See what happens here. Uh oh. One of those. Uh oh's. <laughs> careful especially on this side where the uh, those thin lines are tap it on there a little more but I do want it to go in those lines around the edges so that it shows the, the dimension of it I don't know if they're wide enough for that to happen or not so we'll have to see center needs to be dark, but I'm going to put the, uh, the center in that. Okay, let's see what we got. Well, that didn't really show up much at all around the edge, so what I may need to do is go back and make those wider lines there for that, but we'll just see how it looks when I put the center in it, and I'm going to bring this little piece back over so I can look at it. That's a purple color. That's green. I don't think any of those are what I want. I think I'm just gonna use black, and I have, I think I have a black in this set. This is a Tombow set. It was on sale, obviously, um, at Walmart. I only go to Walmart, it seems like. <laughs> I go there every week, and I always find something I wanna buy. Okay, this one has a small end at, at this end, but it's, it's why it's not as fine a tip as the La Plume. Also, I'm bringing my sketch back over since it kind of fits this better. And I'm thinking right about there is where I want the center to be. Is this one I was copying up here? Or that one are the same? Okay, so this, um, it kind of comes out from a center point right about there. So I'm just gonna put a few little dots right there and then start drawing some of these lines out and putting a dot on the end of them. Bigger dot than that, maybe. Kind of goes around like that. Oops. little ones there. This original has a lot more lines on it than I'm going to put because these lines are thicker and uh, so I'll, I'll just leave it like that. And I think that it might benefit from some, some more um, color on it. It makes a bigger flower. Theirs is better than mine. <laughs> I think really and truly I need to cut another stencil for those dark places and that would add some more dimension to it. I decided to go ahead and cut another stencil for these darker colors, these places. And for it, I used, this is the one I cut. It doesn't look like much there. I used one of these report covers. I hope it's not glaring. They have this kind of deal. They're, they are, um, oh, this is the one I cut off. They're not as stiff as the um, clamshell type acetate. And not even as thick as this one. The, the first one I used, it was the lid to the, the greeting card package. But it seemed to work just fine and it cuts out much easier than the heavier acetate does. So there are lots of options of what you can use to cut your acetate stencils from. So anyway, I was gonna show you, this is the one I did originally, and I went back in and added this darker color on it. 
and drew the center on it. And then this is another one I, I did after I um, cut the second one. Actually, I, I think what I did was I did this and didn't add the extra color. Then I did another one and added the color and then went back to this one and added that second darker color in there. And what I used for that is um, this dress oxide. It's called Festive Berries and it's, it's a bright pink, almost red. I still think their original one looks better than mine. Mine's a little flattened out, but I'm okay with it and I had fun doing it. I hope you'll let me know if you cut stencils and do some stenciling in your journals and maybe tell me any tips, extra tips that you have or know about. Another way I had stencils in my book was to use this die set and cut using some junk mail. I cut stencils out. I used these two in there. There's, there's one of them. And then the other one was on a center spread. I think it's this one, maybe. Yes, that center spread. If you have a, a Big Shot machine and some junk mail, I just use, um, like this is a, a pizza advertisement that came in the mail. It has a shiny surface on it, and it's not going to be a permanent stencil like one made out of acetate, but it would last several several times, especially if you use the Distress Oxide inks to make your stencils. And I use one of these makeup brushes. This one's called a foundation brush. Another item I got at Dollar Tree, so pretty inexpensive for that. If you have a machine that will cut dies and have dies that, um, what you need is one that cuts holes in, and the design is in the holes, like this. Or this one has these holes. I have used that before to, to make a border design. This is one I just, I cut this flower out and used the flower, but that design right there, you could use that as a stencil. That's a, just on a um, index card. It's this piece right here. But you could also use the, the fern. That would make a cute little stencil or the leaf wood. Um, you could even have a stencil that has several of these leaves, like they're falling or something, if you wanted to do that. But anything like this, you could use, even the, the uh, mushroom would work. So that's just another idea of how you can use your dies to um, get designs in your junk journals. So I think I've gone on long enough for today, for one day. Thanks so much for watching. I hope some of this was helpful to you and that you try out some stenciling. See you next time. Bye. Thank you.